The Biden balloon saga continues. This time, the U.S. military is dragging it out of the ocean. You can see photos were released by the U.S. Navy. We are going to take a look at all of them because there are some interesting things going on. We also have the flight path of the balloon. This came from Roz Alerts. They're telling us that the Chinese surveillance balloon flew over some very sensitive sites like Minutemen sites, Titan sites, Atlas sites, and we're going to take a look at the flight path. We also have clips from Schumer and the Republicans before we go over to General Mattis, who explains what the Trump administration knew. But first, let's start off with the photos of the balloon as it's being recovered from the United States Navy. You can see here a pretty small ship that's got a little you know, boat just kind of floating out there, and it is pulling up the balloon, right? That looks like actual balloon inflatable material like a latex or a cloth fabric, you know, like you'd see an actual balloon here. You also see some looks like scaffolding or some bracing metal construction, probably to hold solar panels or whatever the rest of the payload look like. looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 back there. If that's a second person in the silhouette there. So eight to 10 people on this boat and they're pulling ashore the balloon. We also have some more photographs. They're going out into the night. So this, you can see here, this looks like sort of like a dusk photo. The sun is setting behind them. They're out there for a while. So they're still pulling this thing up. And this doesn't look like it's all that much of a different scene, right? It's kind of the same scene. A second boat shows up. Looks like mostly the same crew. They're still continuing to pull out that sort of scaffolding or whatever that brace looks like to hold other equipment. Here, a big carrier, big ship back there behind in the horizon. They're pulling up the boat. Looks like a different boat, actually, right? So that's a little bit of a different. That might be the same boat or the similar structure of a boat. Yeah, just a different angle. Here's another close up. And it's probably not that far off, right, from the same time. So I'm trying to think about are the, how far apart are these photos and are we getting different angles? And is there anything that we can see from them? Is there anything we can glean from them? No, nah, not really. This photo looks like it's probably much the same as this photo, sort of taken right around the same time. And we've got some lights. That one guy has a headlight on. Don't see any diving equipment, really. I mean, not that you, you know, nobody's suited up or anything, it looks like. Uh, so they're all just sort of pulling stuff up. Don't know that anybody is in the water diving, right? Haven't seen anybody in the water going down to the bottom or if everything is connected. Here's another close up. Looks like more of the balloon inflation material, whatever it's made of. You know, don't really know any of that yet. Here's yet another angle. All right, so that's basically what we get. Not a ton of not a ton of stuff to glean. They bring it ashore. We don't know how much has ultimately been recovered or what is still floating around or what is at the bottom of the ocean. We don't know. Now, a lot of the media today is sort of focused, or I would say a lot of the administration today is focused on the State of the Union. So there wasn't a, a press briefing from Corrine. There wasn't a, a press secretary a, a, a spokesman statement from the Department of Defense or the Pentagon or the State Department. We didn't really have much today because everybody's focused on the State of the Union. And so we'll see if Joe Biden addresses it at all or not. But we do know the flight path certainly looks a little bit problematic. Republicans are upset about it. Even Democrats are upset about it. I think a, a large swath of Americans are sort of upset about this because as you can see from this image, and let's zoom in on this just a little bit and pull this open so we can actually see the file. Here it is. Little bit zoomed in. So here they tell us that it was first spotted Thursday afternoon in Montana. It was flying through spotted Thursday evening, Wyoming. And you know these little dots, the red, orange, and yellow dots resemble different sites. And this is according to Roz Alerts on Twitter. But Atlas sites, Titan sites, Minutemen sites. So you're sort of watching this balloon fly over very sensitive areas. You've got Wyoming. It sort of made a pass over that. Didn't look like it jumped over that juncture. But another theory is that the balloon, if it's so high up, it has like a big cone that comes down. The higher it is, the wider the diameter of the cone because it's farther away. So it sort of expands the surveillance area, the footprint of the balloon. So it goes through South Dakota right over this cluster where there's Four different sites there. Two sites in Nebraska. It goes over one near the border between Kansas. Missouri flies over there. Spotted Friday afternoon, Friday morning between Nebraska and uh, Missouri. Friday night, it is over Nashville. 
And then we sort of see that it's out of the range of a lot of the sensitive areas at that point. It's making its way back to South Carolina. Of course, it was shot down on Saturday afternoon. We talked all about that. So a very interesting path. And it seems like it got most of what it needed when it breached Montana. And there's questions about this. Is this the is this a pre-planned flight path? Are they able to stop the trans were they able to stop the transmission of data from the satellite over to or from this balloon over to China? Or how did this all go? We don't know. But there are questions about this and the reaction from the Democrats to what the Biden administration did is still unfolding. We turn our attention to Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer, of course, is the majority leader in the Senate. And he gets asked about, actually, he didn't, this isn't even a question. Chuck Schumer was delivering a press briefing and he volunteered that the Biden administration did a great job on the balloon, says, I applaud the work that they did. They acted calm and cautiously. And this went down about as good as you could expect. Okay. So Republicans are, in, are stuck. They can't govern. They can't agree on anything. I, instead, they're focused on political theater. They don't do any, they're not trying to do anything real. And we hope they won't continue to do this on something as important as the surveillance balloon. China, China sent that surveillance balloon over. Yeah, and you let it the float Biden through. The administration was calm, calculated, and effective. According to, they listened to the military experts. They listened to the intelligence experts. And they did the right thing. Did the military tell them to allow it to float into the airspace and allow it to float through Midland America? That was the military's consensus? Not to blow it out of the sky up in Alaska? I mean, don't we deserve answers on that entire thought process? But Republicans, even before they saw and knew what was happening, started, some of them, not all, lambasting the president. Don't because when it came in, to the United States airspace, that's when the problem was. That's when the breach was. Violation of international law, they know that. We all know that. It became a security risk at that moment. At that moment, as soon as it crossed the border, did you were you able to shut it down? Were you able to know exactly what it was? No, right? It took like till it got into like Kansas until we started to get answers from the Pentagon. So that's when the breach was. That's why people started lambasting the administration when it crossed, and that's why they've been continuing it up through today. Those criticisms were at best premature and in all probability highly political. This is one area where we don't need politics. So we need Democrats and Republicans to come together. We need the country to come together to condemn China for what it did and have a unified front in dealing with the Chinese Communist Party. I applaud President Biden for his leadership. Great job I letting it float that around. I listen to the military and national security mm -hmm. experts. And I think as we go forward in time, everyone's going to see what he did was the right thing. We hope our Republican colleagues will avoid the politics. And there's some talk of a joint resolution condemning China. I hope that's what they do. Ready for your questions. Well, yes. that's not going to happen. Of course, the Republicans are going to beat up the Biden administration peacefully and politically all over this. Because as many people are suggesting, it kind of was a boneheaded thing to do. Now, Schumer gets some questions on that. You heard that was his statement. I applaud the Biden people. Great job. The military said, let's shoot it down after it's over water. And many open questions about that still, right? Did it have an explosive? Did it have some other volatile in there? Something biological, something nuclear, something else? Nobody knows, right? That's part of the question. But the military and the DOD and Pat Ryder and everybody over there from the Pentagon, they didn't tell us that. They didn't say, we don't want to shoot it down because there could be a volatile or there could actually be a threat. They didn't say, well, we actually don't know what's up there. So it's, it's best for us to just let it float over. And of course, would they ever tell us that? No, obviously, right? They're not going to say, well, yeah, we can't shoot it down because it might be carrying nuclear materials up there. You know, we don't know. They're not going to say that. No, it's totally inert. It's just a balloon. It, it might as well be a weather balloon. I mean, it's not a weather balloon, but it might as well be. It's not even a big deal, right? And it's floating overhead. And then finally it's over water. It's not populated over there. Boom, they take it down. And whatever it is, is contained, and, you know, and there's not a bunch of divers, it looks like, rushing to the bottom of the ocean. Maybe there are, we don't know. If there are, they didn't send any photos of that stuff. So we've got 
more questions from Schumer. And the next one comes here. They say, you know, you're sort of getting criticized over here. The Democrats are kind of getting beaten up over this. And you guys are looking quite foolish by saying that Trump people did it too. It kind of looks like that kid who gets in trouble, you know, who does something bad. He goes, well, everybody else did it too. And you go, well, no, they didn't. All right. You did it. So own it. But he's not He's sort of moving past that, and he's being asked questions now about potential failures of the Biden administration to adequately deal with this. And he picks up the same line of thinking that we heard yesterday from the State Department with our friend Ned. Ned was telling us, this was a great operation. We got all sorts of material out of this. Do you know how many pictures we got? No, 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 no. First of all, let me correct the record here. China wasn't spying on us, okay? We were spying on them. We wanted that balloon here. And when that balloon got here, we spied even harder than they were spying on us. And so how about that, China? Yes. On the State Back to the State of the Union, you mentioned the Chinese spy balloon. There's still, the U.S. military is still recovering some of the debris um, from the ocean right now. How much do you want to hear President Biden discuss the Chinese spy balloon in his State of the Union today? Well, there'll be a limit to what he can discuss because a lot of it will be classified. But again, I think he can say this, I've said it, it's not classified. By letting the balloon be shot down over water, we got far greater look at these balloons, which are relatively new. Um, we didn't know about them. This, our military and our surveillance NSA didn't know about them till last year. Three of them went over when Trump was oh, there. Okay, well, we're gonna ask General Mattis about that. We've got a clip from him coming up. He was speaking at some academy somewhere. And he's going to clarify that record because we've already got Mark Esper says no. We've already got Pompeo says no. We've already got Ratcliffe says no. And these guys are laughing at them like this is ridiculous. There was nothing like this going on. So we're going to go over to General Mattis as well. And we know many of these people are not huge fans of Trump either. So we'll see what Mattis says about this. But this is more Schumer saying this is a great operation, by the way. You know, first of all, we can see a ton of stuff at the bottom of the ocean. And it's also uh, hopefully the Chinese waterproofed and ocean proofed all of their spy equipment because, you know, we wouldn't want the ocean water to ruin it. But you can't blame Trump because he didn't know of them. They didn't know of them then. Yeah, Just nobody like, knew about it then. Having them come down over water is a, is, is a huge, huge advantage than having them come down over land. Why? Because over water, much of the surveillance balloons stuff can be recovered. So we're going to know what it is. You can't get it if it lands on the ground. You can't blow it up over the Alaskan, the Aleutian Islands up there. This is all fake garbage nonsense. He's full of crap. And we're also going to know what they've what they've sought. And even as the balloon uh, came over the southeastern part of the United States, we were monitoring it very, very carefully to see what the Chinese were picking up and not. So I think <clears throat> we're going to learn a lot. How so, wow, okay, so it sounds like they could see the information that was being beamed home to China so they could pick it up. Now, yesterday we heard from Pompeo. Mike Pompeo was the CIA director at some point, also somebody who had a lot of access to the intelligence committees and so on. And he said that he had heard that maybe they had the ability to cut off the transmission, what it was Hoover vacuuming up and siphoning off over to China. Were they able to stop that? Like, were they able, able, able to block the transmission of the data? And other people are saying, well, obviously that's not the case, because if they were able to block the transmission of the data, wouldn't the balloon stop its trajectory? I mean, the balloon was like getting remote control commands, like somebody was controlling a race car. Going this way, going this way. We already heard from Patrick Ryder, the Pentagon spokesman, previously that he said that it actually made a, he didn't say this directly, but he basically implied it, that it made a change. As soon as it got reported in the media, the balloon changed trajectory. So somebody back in China, President Xi's on his iPhone, uh, spy hacking, spy surveillance balloon app. He's like, oh man, this app is so great. It's so convenient. Look, let me zoom in. And he said, oh crap, it's in the media. He goes, doop, doop, changes it. And it changes course and goes down, you know, better, better get over those nuclear silos as quick as we can. And so they start flying over middle America. They could have taken it down at any single point during that juncture. It would have landed on the land and they could have picked it all up. They wouldn't have even needed a boat. They could have just backed up a pickup truck right there. Much he can t I think he can talk about that he, did, he listened to the military. By the way, had he not listened to the military, do you think those same Republicans would have said, he was premature, you know, he did it too soon, he should have listened to the military. I bet some of them would have. 
Uh, not the military thing. I think that that's sort of a misdirection. I think that he probably would have been criticized, probably even by me. I can be honest about this. If he would have just like, you know, balloon nuke to nuke the balloon, you know, immediately. And he came out, and he's like, oh, I'm Joe Biden, like a gates of hell speech. And he's like, you know, we're going to stand strong against China. I probably would have been like, all right, Joe, very convenient here, buddy boy. You, you're under special counsel investigation for your own Biden document scandal. You've got Hunter Biden. He's getting, you know, a lot of scrutiny down his neck, rightfully so. Republicans are in charge. House investigations coming from the Judiciary Committee, the Oversight Committee. Yeah, like you could use a distraction, right? That would have been my criticism, I think. But I also would have been like, all right, that's pretty dang, uh, dang you know, all right, Joe, that's pretty good there, China Joe. You know, that's pretty amazing. Like that's, that's good. That's what you should do. And if he would have come out and said, also, there were other balloons you know, that had crossed, you know, crossed over the border. And there's another one down in Latin America. And there's one up in Canada and we're not letting it come into my airspace. I took it out. I'm like, all right, well, okay, well, what can you do about that? You know, it, it is very convenient that they sent a balloon over in the middle of all of these scandals, but he didn't do that. He just let it float through us float all around, took it out at the last moment, and now they're all trying to look backwards and come up with justifications for why they did it that way. But in any case, although we, we, that didn't happen, um, so I think that uh, <coughs> he, will, he will show why he did it, but I don't think we'll get the details till we have our classified briefing on Thursday. Mm. And by the way, that briefing was going to be the Gang of Eight, but Lots of members wanted it. They were entitled to it. So I requested that it be expanded to the whole Senate and the administration agreed. Yes. All right. So a lot of senators are going to get a lot of information. A lot more senators are going to be figuring out uh, what I guess the, the backstory is on this balloon. And so we have a very interesting clip here from our friend Chuck, and he gets asked about the relationship with China. And he's saying, you know, things are looking a little bit uh, tense here is what he says. And so before we listen to that clip, we have to remind ourselves that if we are about to enter World War III with a foreign nation, it is appropriate that we are all healthy and well so we can fight back the foreign invaders, which means, you know, it's probably a good idea that we lose some of those leftover pandemic pounds, you know what I mean? How sick are you of those ads for weight loss and fad diets, all that stuff? Right, you've been there, you've done that. They don't work. You know what does? eating five healthy servings of fruits and vegetables every single day. You do that, and I bet the weight just falls right off. But look, vegetables, you know, not a fan. Who's got time to prepare all that stuff every day? Solution. Let's talk about Field of Greens. Fieldofgreens.com. Science-backed formula. Specific fruits and vegetables you're not going to find in any other product. We know proper nutrition reboots your metabolism. You can burn calories faster, lose weight the healthier way. And Field of Greens is the only brand backed by a better health promise. Look, you're going to feel healthier, look healthier, but the greater proof is going to come at your next doctor's visit when he says, you look fabulous. Whatever you've done, you look great. Keep it up. Let's get you started, my friends. 15% you can save off your first order. Very easy. Visit fieldofgreens.com. Don't forget to use promo code Robert when you enter in your order. Promo code Robert at fieldofgreens.com and you can get your real organic superfood. Feel vibrant. Start preparing for World War III and uh, be healthy also and perform better at work and be happier and you know feel good also in your day-to-day. -day. It's not just for World War III. It's also uh, just a nice, nice uh, addition to our lives. And so check that out, my friends, at fieldofgreens.com. All right. Now, since we have that out of the way, let's check in with Chuck Schumer. And of course, he is asking our, he gets asked about the relationship with China. Hey, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, can you tell us how Biden's response to the Chinese spy balloon is going over with the Chinese? What do you think the relationship looks like now? On the Chinese spy balloon, how would you describe the U.S. relation right now with China? Tense. Yes. Do you think that the U.S. should take retaliatory action against Well, the look, they, they postponed the uh, trip uh, of Blinken, and I know the administration is looking at other actions that can be taken. Okay? Thank you, everybody. What's the relationship in China? On the Chinese spy balloon, how would you describe the U.S. relation right now with China? Tense. Tense. Do you think that? Yikes. All right. Well, as we know, if you're in, you know, uh, in a World War III, you, you wouldn't know you're in World War III probably until y year three or four, maybe. Who knows? But it feels like we might be getting closer and closer to that. The Republicans are responding. They're saying, yeah, the Biden people really sort of screwed this up pretty badly. 
The House Republicans came out. They had an entire press briefing as well. They talked a lot about the border, the debt, and other issues. But Mr. Scalise, Steve Scalise, was asked about the balloon. How do you think the Biden administration did handling the Chinese spy balloon? Questions are very quiet on this. You can hear the gain. A bipartisan. Yeah, there were a number of, well, first of all, we set up a bipartisan commission on China, and Chairman Gallagher is already going to work uh, with that committee. But there's standing committees that have jurisdiction as well. Yesterday I was meeting with some of the chairs of committees who are working on privacy legislation. You want to talk about a way to confront, whether it's TikTok, whether it's so many other social media platforms uh, that are collecting data on Americans every single day and how to counter that. I think they're real bipartisan opportunities to pass strong privacy protections for Americans. Yeah, the Chinese spy balloon was just gathering data, as far as we know, just surveillance data from a topical level, unless it was also grabbing Wi-Fi's and stuff like that. You know, I don't know how, how that would work from that far up or whatever it could get, gobble up. But the point is, right, it's, it's a physical surveillance device flying overhead. TikTok is an app that's installed in 100 million American phones that asks you for permission to spread its disgusting tentacles into every facet of your life. And nobody's really panging the table about that one over there in Congress. Yeah, they come out, well, we don't use it in our office. Nobody cares about that, right? It's about what China can do to influence, according to Christopher Wray in the FBI's own assessment on this, what they can do to influence Physically, the, the minds of Americans with just the flip of a switch there in Beijing. But the spy balloon is a different problem. And, and this is a national security threat uh, that was a test. You know, and President Biden tried to call it a success that they shot the balloon down over the ocean. The problem is it was the wrong ocean shot it down. Mm -hmm. the Atlantic. It should have been the Pacific Ocean. You can look at the trajectory of that balloon and when the American government detected it. Uh, there were many opportunities over the Pacific Ocean to shoot it down before it could actually carry out its mission. It completed its mission. President Biden let it complete its mission uh, before he shot it down. Yeah. Isn't it a mission, mission accomplished? I mean, if the Chinese were beaming data this whole time, it's a spy satellite. It was built and created to beam data. If it was successfully doing that the entire juncture, that's a mission accomplished for them, as far as I can tell. The only thing that they lost was the equipment, but it was probably a suicide mission anyways. So who cares if they lost, you know, what is it, a million dollar, two million dollar, five hundred million dollar to them? It doesn't matter. It's just fake money. And all they're doing is basically printing it anyways. Uh, and it went over many military bases. It wasn't some random uh, path that it took through the United States it was very specific through a number of very sensitive military bases that it flew over as we and saw this idea that oh don't worry it wasn't collecting data or sending it back to China how can anybody say that with a straight face first of all it was still flying on its path so it was getting some kind of data from somewhere to know where to go are you unless it was pre-programmed right it could have been pre-programmed like as a fail safe Okay, if you lose contact right, with your phone home people in China, go this way and see what you can get and then figure out how to send that. Maybe it has a black box that drops to the bottom of the ocean and the Chinese go pick it up or something, you know, who knows? Or it's got a submarine little device. It's already submarining back over to China. Who knows? You're telling me it wasn't also sending information back during that path. It should have never been allowed to complete its mission. It should have never been allowed to start its mission. It should have been shot down over the Pacific Ocean when we had multiple opportunities. Totally. Yeah. And they let it fly around because they had a trip coming up and they didn't want to offend the Chinese. That's all it was. It was just a big delay. They didn't want to jinx a trip that they had planned. And so they would rather jeopardize American national security to save face. Here's the final clip from Scalise. Questions about this come in from the media. They want to know, well, all right, you guys going to do anything about this? I mean, we've got a balloon situation. The Biden people are doing cartwheels. They think they did an outstanding job, just job well done, like almost like a mission accomplished. They should get an aircraft carrier. But this is the question. You know, the Republicans are now in charge of the House. Are you guys going to pass the legislation? Is this going to solve, be solved anytime soon? On legislation right now, we're working on legislation right now dealing with the Chinese spy balloon. There's four different committees involved. And so, as you can imagine, uh, each committee is working through. We even haven't even had the classified briefings yet. You know, the Gang of Eight briefing 
uh, that was supposed to be had hasn't yet been called yet. We're trying to get a full briefing with all of the members of Congress. Speaker McCarthy has asked for a, a full briefing of all members of Congress to find out what really happens. So we're still gathering more facts, working through that process. So we may have a piece of legislation, but it's not finalized yet. Thank you all. We'll see. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how the Biden administration stops them from getting that data. It'll be interesting. Well, you know, probably uh, we'll get Karine Jean-Pierre, like, like we said, oh, just go talk to China Council. Talk to uh, a Xi Jinping's council if you want to know the details on that one. So we had another issue pop up. Big question was whether the Trump administration knew anything about this. The media went wild. They said, Biden's balloon? Okay, well, what about Trump's balloons? He had three of them. Biden only had one. Meanwhile, all of the Trump people, we've got Ratcliffe, Esper, we had Pompeo, Bolton, all of them saying that's nuts. Okay, and we know Bolton, if there was a balloon that flew across from China, he would have told all of us, believe me. He would have said, that's it. We got to go to war. Everybody, get your boys and girls, arm them up. We're going to war with China, right? He would have been doing cartwheels for a war because that's what he does. But that didn't happen. So I don't think that there were any balloons because there were a lot of neocons in the Trump administration that would have been pounding the table to go to war. And that never happened. And people also never took videos or, or photographs of the Chinese balloons back during the Trump years. So it felt like it was a bunch of finger pointing to say, well, you know, you might think we're idiots, but they were even bigger idiots than we are except they didn't do any of that stuff, evidently. In this video, we have a clip from General Mattis. He's speaking to a group of individuals at an academy somewhere, and they ask him about the balloon situation. He says, I don't even know what you're talking about. There is no balloon story that I remember at all. Yeah, the balloon's serious. I, I, I don't mean to make light of it, but don't, don't worry that it suddenly was able to find things out, satellites that are up in low Earth orbit weren't spotting already. Um, you, you got to wonder, was it stupidity or left hand not telling the right hand what they're doing? Why the Chinese chose that time to do it? But, uh, you know, I'm going to tell for any of you young guys in the audience, if you want to make a four-star general, fight enemy generals dumber than a bucket of rocks, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, um, I would still say it's serious, and, and, but I wouldn't get overly worried at all about it. But there are some questions we all, as Americans, need to answer here, I think. You know, did it really happen during the past administration? Because there doesn't seem to be anybody from the past administration who's aware of it. No, I'm nobody. for the first two years of that administration. Uh, now, it's possible there's old radar tapes that show things that now if we go back and know what it looks like, go back and say, well, that wasn't a, an ice storm over the Aleutians. That was a balloon or something. I don't know. But... No, there, there's some answers uh, that the American people are owed. <clears throat> and could we not have taken it down sooner? I mean, NORAD, North American Air Defense, has got a lot of Canadian fighters and the Alaska-based U.S. fighters up there intercepting Russian planes routinely up over the Bering Straits. Um, so yeah, so nothing, right? Doesn't have any knowledge of it. Nobody had any knowledge of it. Maybe they were flying around or something, but nobody took pictures. Nobody had any incidents with this thing. And now they're all pointing fingers back to Trump because they don't want to be embarrassed any further. We'll see what they're able to dig up for us or literally pull up from the bottom of the ocean and whether they'll share it with us. But I do suspect that there will be more. I mean, it sounds like the entire Senate's going to get briefed on this. If Kevin McCarthy has his way, the entire House of Representatives is going to be briefed on this. And that means that we, the American people, probably should learn more about it because a lot more representatives will get it, which is good news. Typically what happens with this garbage is, you know, it's like four people who learn about it or the gang of eight and then none of us know the details. They say, no, 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 it was just a big misunderstanding and we love China again, you know, so we'll see. Now we'll continue to cover it. Thank you for following along. Thank you for liking this video wherever it is you're watching it. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.